happiness. Contentment. Compassion. Fulfillment. Confidence. Are these part of your home in the heart? If they maybe need added on or restored, then maybe you're a fix-me-upper. destination series and we're here at Chatham University in Pittsburgh at Jessica's Labyrinth. I don't know if you can see these interesting moon type designs on the ground. They actually serve a purpose and have a symbolic meaning. I'll race you to the moon. <laughs> it, might, it, might be, it might be kind of difficult. We'll get lost. <laughs> you think we can just step over the sides? The grass is kind of high, yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever heard of a labyrinth? Yes, I used to play a game called Labyrinth. Okay. That's the only time I've heard of it. <laughs> so, labyrinths actually have a historical meaning, even way, way back in time, like pre-Greece, I think, that they had original formations of labyrinths, and they're elaborate mazes that spiral around the center point, finally get you to the center, and then you have to spiral your way back out to exit. Most people think that it's like a maze and that it has turns and tricks that is meant to leave you stuck in a... So what was the purpose? Well, so like I said, labyrinths, don't, they don't trick you up. They, if you stay on the path, it should take you to the middle. If you leave the leave the path then you might get lost but it, it's not like a oh, maze okay. that's designed to confuse you. Labyrinths actually are a spiritual or previously had spiritual meaning that it takes you on a journey in a single location. A journey that is parallel to a journey in life. Hmm. So in the 1800s a lot of the grand cathedrals in France actually had labyrinths built into their floors and people would make pilgr pilgrimages to go visit these cathedrals and walk the labyrinth. And they say there are three R's in walking a labyrinth. The first one stands for releasing. And so when we walk all of those turns and it winds us close to the center and then somehow we end up way back on the outer rim and then we get back close to the center before we finally find our space in the middle we're letting go of all of the baggage that we've carried along in our past and we're clearing our mind so that when we get to the center we can be open to hear whatever comes our way and that, that's where when it was in a religious connotation they said you're closest to God in the middle and then once you sit there and you can stay there as long as you like you receive the information to make a decision what do I do in difficult situations then you do the third arm, you return. So you go all the way back out through loops and bends so that you don't just receive the information and then forget about it and go back to your normal ways. You really process what that information means and how you can apply it to your life. So when I was thinking about gardens and homes and things that we include in our home, like I said, it started out that these grand cathedrals had labyrinths, but then when people realized how helpful it was to them, they started bringing them home and having them in their own garden. And now you can actually even buy finger labyrinths or paper labyrinths that you can just trace your finger on right. to help guide you through the same thing. Really though, the labyrinth is symbolic and it doesn't really need to be even finger traced. What we can do is follow those three R's in our life, even if we don't have a labyrinth in front of us. It's just a nice symbolic meaning, just like our homes are just a reflection of our internal self. Our labyrinth can be in our mind and walking it or tracing it is just 
symbolic of the thought process that we go through. And, you know, maybe there's a like a special place at your house, uh, a room or a porch or something that's really a good place for you where your thinking uh, becomes accelerated and you you process your your thoughts better. And, and maybe that's kind of like what a, a, our own group home is like a labyrinth in a way. You know, we have all these places we can go to and we can come back to and reflect a bit and try to find some solutions to some things that we're thinking about. So, you know when you feel like you don't know what to do, you're lost in a, in a situation and suddenly an answer arises and it seems like it's out of the blue and it's like your little own miracle. Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, to be in a space that we can see the miracles that happen around us all the time, we have to have a clear mind. And so that's what the, the labyrinth allows us to do. We're closest to God when we have a clear mind. Whether we're in the center of a labyrinth, whether we're in the library of our home, or whether we're on a street downtown. We, when we're close to God, when we can see what's happening around us, Clearly, when we can connect to people around us, we can respond rather than react to many anxieties or worries that might project out and get in the way of us realizing what lies right in front of us. And this is a this is a really important component of fixing yourself up. I mean, really, that's why we're here and why we do this, because we want to give you ideas and thoughts, something to think about to add to your existence to try to make your life better. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. And we teach our patients a concept of mindfulness. And this is one way to attain mindfulness, but it's using a space, a physical space to remind you to get there. And like James said, your space in your home might be a reminder to get there too. We get to this mindful space that we're aware of what's going on outside of us, what's going on within us, how we feel about it so that we can be clear and ready to see any opportunity that comes our way so that we can then return back into action phase of life and make a difference, make those renovations, do those changes. Why? Why don't we walk the labyrinth and come back and finish up here? Let's do it. We might think of something better to say. Yeah, so <laughs> which one, which way we go? where do we start? Is it like the yellow brick road? You go that way, I'll go this way, and we'll see where we meet. <laughs> no, if you look good. Okay, I'll follow you. Well, we made it. Uh, it took a lot longer than I thought, but we did do it. And we're back here to say thank you for tuning in this episode. And Sasha, what else do we have to say? So this was a, a really cool experience for us and we got to practice the labyrinth and receive some information when we got to the middle and take away meaning kind of in our, our own lives. and. This show is kind of a, the epitome of some of the meaning that we have because we want to create happiness in other people's lives and meaning in other people's lives. As and much heart, as, as and much heart as, attacks in my life. Yeah. <laughs> as much as we have in other people's. 
Um, so speaking of the heart, you know, as we close, the home and the heart is the most rewarding renovation. So, so take care of it. Thank you. I'm Sasha. And I'm James. Thank you for joining us in another episode of Fix Me Upper. If you liked what you saw, please share it. And if you took any of our advice, give us some before and after. We'd love to hear from you. Send us a letter or send us a video.